Sharingan, Byakugan, Rinnegan. These three are the most reputed of all dojutsu. That is to say, they're the most well-known and believed to be the strongest and most versatile. But as the light of intelligence spreads, so too does the dark circumference of ignorance. The intelligent know that they do not know everything. It is the ignorant who believe that they do know everything because they don't know how much they do not know. That's the reason why the three most reputed dojutsu are no longer up to date. Many other dojutsu have been revealed, and each one possesses wonderful powers. With as much as we see of the Rinnegan these days, it seems to lose its special nature and makes me wonder how long it'll be until Orochimaru learns to simply recreate it, just as he did with the Sharingan and its Mongekyo variant. But coming to the point, the Dojutsu often forgotten is another Dojutsu of the Six Paths that appears to be even rarer than the Rinnegan the Ten Saigon, and its power is magnificent, as great as the Rinnegan in some ways, yet completely and utterly shrouded in mystery. That's going to be the topic of today's video. What if Naruto possessed the Ten Saigon? Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check if you are subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Hiyashi Hyuga ran through the rain. Thankfully, the downpour was enough to start putting out much of the flames, but through the downpour, a bitter chill was entering the air, making it all the more difficult to rescue survivors, or for the survivors themselves. He walked through the broken doors and into the hospital, the hem of his kimono dripping onto the floor. There was the sound of crying, children wounded or present at the death of their parents, pain, suffering. The village was filled with it. The hidden leaf had once been a beacon of strength, a dare to the very heavens to test their power, and God had answered. He answered with death and judgment. In one night, in one single night, the whole village had been abased. The pride they had held turned to shame, as their joy too turned to sorrow. Hiyashi was thankful that the Hyuga clan compound had been out of the way of the battle, safely distant from the beasts that had torn through the village. The Nine Tails, a beast of legend from which had spawned many tales of Kitsune, but he had never believed it to be so large. He had no clue how truly powerful this demon was. No one did, not until it was far too late, and by that time Konoha was already devastated. Hiyashi remembered where he was when it began. Taking a midnight stroll around the compound, hoping to settle his soul for a night's rest, he had felt something was off and needed to work on his issues with movement. That was when the beast appeared, like an explosion in the center of the village. He called out and many of the second branch's men immediately got out of bed, grabbing their gear and rushing off to help. Many Hyuga clan brethren did not make it home that night to their children. But despite how tragic it was, this was not to say that the Hyuga clan had it worse than anyone else. The damage sustained in their compound was nothing more than shrapnel falling from the heavens as the beast tore its way closer to the Hokage's monument, the mere sight of the village's founders causing it to rampage. And as soon as it had appeared, it too had left. No doubt the work of the fourth Hokage. But now, as Hiyashi had been helping with rescue efforts, he received word that the former third Hokage, Hiruzen, had requested his presence at the hospital. And so, now, there he was. He inquired as to where the third was and was informed by a visibly overworked and overstressed nurse that the third Hokage was on the third floor. And so Hiyashi made his way up the stairs as fast as he could. Making it in, he saw the third looking in at a tiny child laying warm and safe in a bed. Lord Hiruzen, what have you called me for? Hiruzen, arms crossed, began to stroke the hair on his chin in thought. Hiyashi, I don't need to tell you. Konoha is in trouble. I know, Lord Hiruzen. The Hyuga will loyally protect this village with their lives. You know, this we vow. Hiruzen nodded. We're going to need it. He turned to face Hiyashi. Fourth Hokage Minato Namakaze is dead. Hiyashi felt as if his breath had been robbed from his lungs. The Hokage is dead? Hiruzen nodded. He, along with his wife, were found at the scene of the battle, their bodies in such condition that we did not need to wait for a medical examiner to declare them deceased. Hiyashi looked down. What will happen to the village? He said as he looked up. The people need a leader right now. They're suffering, and they're going to need someone to look up to. Hiruzen nodded. I will fulfill the role of Hokage once again. Perhaps my appearance will bring stability in the upheaval. The council has already decided to grant me the title, along with all necessary emergency powers. But this is not the only reason why I've called for you. Hiyashi seemed confused. It's not. Hiruzen pointed in. That child possesses something truly special, truly wondrous. 
What is it? Hiyashi asked. Hiruzen motioned for him to follow him in. Once inside, Hiruzen gently lifted the child's eyelid to display a blue not unlike a pristine lake, untouched by man's influence. Within these eyes were the petals of a golden lotus, its appearance not unlike the thousand-petaled chakra, Sahasrara. Hiyashi was awestruck. What is this dojutsu, Hiyashi? It's obviously not a Sharingan. It's not a Rinnegan, nor is it one of the lesser-known dojutsu, such as the Ketsuryugan. I've never seen one like this before. Hiruzen shook his head. I don't know. He looked back at the baby and closed its eye. This storm. What? Hiyashi asked, questioning the sudden meaning of this deluge out of the blue. This storm, Hiruzen said. This child summoned it. Hiyashi was startled. It summoned it. Hiruzen once again nodded his head, affirming the answer. When I lifted the child into my arms, it began to cry. And as it cried, the skies above began to form clouds. And then it began to rain. It has rained ever since. Hiyashi was startled by this. He began to think back about it. Do you know what this dojutsu is? Hiruzen asked. Hiyashi continued to think. I can't be certain, but there is a legend passed down from generation to generation within the Hyuga clan of a lost dojutsu with the power of star beings and the capabilities to mold and reshape the world into whatever it desires. The legend dates all the way back to our earliest ancestor, Hamura. But it would be impossible. This child shouldn't have this ability. It's so rare that it's never appeared once within the Hyuga clan since the founder of our clan. So why would it appear in a clan not even connected to the Hyuga? Hiruzen shook his head. Maybe it's possible that whatever genetics were required to awaken this dojutsu are concocted together within this child. Or perhaps it's simply best to admit already that we may never know. As it stands, this child does not possess any next of kin, and the only one who could take care of it has been out of the village for quite some time and likely won't take interest in protecting the child when he does return. So perhaps you can take Naruto under your wing. If his dojutsu is the same as the one you mentioned earlier, then he would do best to be under your care. Hiyashi nodded. After some time had passed, Hiyashi would take the child and bring it to the Hyuga compound to live with him and the others. There, Hiyashi hoped to discover the truth of this matter, or at the very least, ensure that the child had a happy life. Heavy breathing. Running. The sound of crunching leaves as they were ground underfoot. You can run, but you can't hide, a voice cried out from behind. Hinata Hyuga ran as fast as she could. She knew that this was true. It was impossible to hide from a user of the Byakugan. The Byakugan was so good that it could see chakra signatures and even see through solid objects. Hinata would have a hard time hiding like this, but she couldn't run forever. What could she do? She began to think. The only way to obscure a Byakugan's ability to see her chakra signature is by obscuring it with more chakra, she said to herself. But how? How do I do this? She found herself running to a river. There she stopped as she was only halfway across it. She would then utilize the techniques that all Hyuga seemed to possess and would spin as fast as she could with her 8 trigrams palm rotation technique to not only kick up water but to also infuse it with her chakra, creating a chakra cloak that the Byakugan couldn't get through. It was thick enough to impair regular vision as well as chakra vision, and thanks to the heat in the air, the mist would slowly dissipate as steam, which only further helped make it near impossible to see through. Hinata found a place under a nearby tree to hide. She used a large leaf to cover the entrance. As she crawled in, she noted that this hole had been used before. It must have been an old abandoned fox den. She was thankful it was here. With the cover down, she knew that she'd be safe to hide here for a while at least. As she laid there, she attempted to catch her breath until she heard splashing of feet moving through the lake. She covered her mouth to hush her loud panting. She saw a pair of feet stop in front of the den. A bead of sweat rolled down her cheek as she watched. Please move on, she begged and pleaded within herself. Please just move on. The next moments felt like they took forever, but eventually the feet would run off. After a moment to be sure that she was alone, Hinata would sigh. She had gotten away, or so she thought. A pair of hands reached into the den. She kicked away, attempting to go deeper in, only to have her ankles caught by the hands. She was pulled out with a scream. There she saw Naruto standing over her. Found you. Hinata grunted as she laid her head back on soft dirt. How did you know I was here? She asked. Simple. Nobody kicks up a distraction like that if they're so far ahead that they can't be seen by even a Byakugan. When I ran ahead and didn't see you anywhere, despite the distraction being extremely fresh, I knew that it meant you must have been hiding in it, camouflaging yourself. I came back and noticed a chakra signature underground, not a place where mist like this would gather. So I pulled you out. He not aside. Why are you so smart all the time? She asked. He offered her a hand, which she took. 
Honestly, it's hard to play these sorts of games when you have x-ray vision. He pulled her to her feet. She looked up to see the pearls that were normally a silvery color, but on some days, under some light, appeared a cream white. Despite not being a Hyuga, Naruto possessed Byakugan, and they weren't pilfered or transplanted either. Some believed that Naruto was a Hyuga distantly, but the truth of his lineage could not be definitively known. And since Naruto could not actually be pinned as a Hyuga, that meant that the Hyuga had less control over him. This meant that they could not force him to take the curse mark, because they couldn't even prove he was a member of the secondary branch. Given that he was within the household of Hiyashi, he was simply granted the title of a first branch member and mostly left alone. An enigma is what he was, but all the same, he'd become like family to them. Not only did he possess Byakugan though, he possessed something that had never been seen before to the Elder's knowledge. It was believed that Naruto possessed the mythical Tenth Saigon. All of this together gave him incredible skill, but what was more, Naruto knew how to use it. He had incredible pride, and with Neji being hailed as a genius, the two would often train together, with Naruto desiring to push past Neji to prove that he could be a genius too. That drive to learn and grow stronger led to Naruto becoming not only more knowledgeable, but wiser too, as he had just displayed. It was one thing to possess information, but another thing entirely to apply it to situations one faced on a daily basis. The old Naruto would have never found her, but this Naruto, this Naruto could not even be spoken about in the same sentence as the old one. He was a totally different shinobi now. And thanks to his tireless effort and desire to pass Neji in combat prowess and shinobi skills, Naruto had begun to take his studies seriously, which led to him moving up in class at the academy, going from class dud to valedictorian in quick succession. This gave him a confidence boost, and with his eventual absorption of the gentle fist techniques, even the school bullies had to respect him, else they end up drooling into the tatami flooring when their bodily functions betray them due to Naruto striking just the right tenketsu. This left him a popular boy in class among others, especially with the girls. They saw his actions and could sense his strength. His confident smile in the face of adversity, as well as his delinquent blonde hair, spiked up as a challenge to the establishment, had every girl ready to defy their parents just to spend time with him. But all the same, despite possessing these traits, Naruto only ever seemed to want to spend time with a single girl, and that was Hinata. To be frank, Hinata couldn't quite pin their relationship. Naruto lived in the home of Hiyashi, and saw Hiyashi like a father. So that would make Naruto like her brother, right? But then, why was it that when she saw him training in the cool of the evening that her heart raced? Why was it that when he smiled at her like this, she felt a warm feeling welling up down deep within? All the while, Naruto couldn't help it himself. He looked down into her beautiful eyes and felt a longing to hold her. But he dared not go that far, not while living under her father's roof. That would be disrespectful to the man who had raised him. Naruto pulled away, clearing his throat and scratching the back of his head. Hinata herself pulled her arms back in, turned her body to the side as if she were contemplating running, but simply smiled with a slight blush. Naruto offered a bow of respect. Thank you for playing this game with me, Lady Hinata. The girl smiled but dared not speak, simply looking back at him. She hated it when he called her Lady Hinata. He was her friend, and every time he did so, he made it sound like they were less than that. But she understood what it was to be flustered. She was flustered at this moment as well. Together, the two walked back to the compound where Hiyashi sat with a pipe, a cup of tea, and the day's newspaper. He looked over at the two and smiled. Every day, Naruto grew stronger, and every day his Tensaigon displayed some new seedling of an ability. But something troubled Hiyashi. While it remained out of the paper, the Uchiha were not very good at keeping secrets. They had also experienced an awakening. A child had been born among them that only recently awakened a dojutsu of his own that seemed to hold legendary status, the Rinnegan. To most, this would seem like a blessing. The village was entering a golden age of peace, with two young protectors fulfilling the roles of the previous Sages of Six Paths. But Hiyashi could not help but feel troubled by this. The old boy sensed something. Fate had given them two important awakenings, neither of which could be called a coincidence. Fate had a tendency to always balance out somehow. Good luck and bad luck. Hiyashi knew that if two children were to be born with exalted dojutsu that gave them the same strength as the founders of the shinobi world, then it meant that an equal threat must rise. After all, everything had its equals and opposites. For every positive force in the universe, there was a negative, and Hiyashi could only fear what might be coming. As Naruto entered the compound, he saw Neji waiting for him. Naruto stood there for a moment and gazed at Neji's smirk. It was an inviting smile. Neji was wearing a black sleeveless shirt and roomy shorts. His fists were wrapped up, as were his feet. 
The outfit was one Naruto had come to dread. This was Neji's I'm gonna kick your ass outfit. It meant he was about to strong arm Naruto into a duel. I've been teaching you everything I know non-stop because I sense the potential in you to be a challenge to me, Neji said. I was told by my teammate that hard work surpasses birthright. I think it's a load of crap. But if at all possible, then I plan to capitalize on my natural talent by working hard to surpass you and your cheap Mongekyo Byakugan, or whatever you'd like to call it. If it's true that hard work can surpass natural talent, then imagine what would happen if natural talent worked as hard as someone like Lee. I've been strengthening you to turn you into a diving board for me to jump into my deeper well of potential. And now it's time to see if I've wasted my time or not. Naruto looked around. Neji, I just got back. Can we schedule this for tomorrow? Naruto attempted to walk past. Neji held his arm out to stop him, planning to push it off just because you went on an afternoon jog with my cousin. I just got done with my own exercises, so we're even. Naruto looked to Hinata, who then looked to Hiyashi, who was just now putting down his paper and showing interest in this with a bit of a smile. Naruto looked over. Fine, but at least allow me to get changed first. Neji removed his hand. Come prepared to go all out. Know that I will. Naruto walked past Neji and into his room where he changed into a pair of old shorts and a roomy black t-shirt that had a swirling pattern, not unlike the visual representation of the village's will of fire emblazoned on the front. Wrapping his hands and feet properly, he would return to Neji. Naruto would stand about four meters away from Neji, who stood there with both hands behind his back. Your inability to properly release chakra from every tenketsu in your body severely hinders your ability to master the gentle fist. But that does not mean you cannot use it. Most techniques within the gentle fist make use of only the tenketsu in the hands, which is what you, like everyone else, can control. While you cannot perform eight trigrams palm rotation, you possess the potential to learn far greater techniques. Due to this, you should consider new ways to utilize your abilities. You must consider that the greatest defense is the best offense. And on times you must defend, you must utilize the techniques you have to defend. Neji snapped a finger. Hinata appeared. She began to demonstrate for him usage of a particular technique. The protective 8 trigram 64 palms. He watched as her speed and limber nature helped her to move in ways that Naruto couldn't dream of. Neji smirked as he watched. This technique offers a great defense, but also serves as a great offense. This is the technique type you should strive for as a user of the gentle fist without the capacity to use all available techniques. Naruto shook his head. I doubt I could keep up with that. The limberness of movement required. Neji smiled. Your muscles are stiff because you only use them one way, Naruto. You build more and more mass without the knowledge of how to use it. For our techniques and our abilities, raw physical strength is meaningless, and in most cases, excess muscle mass simply gets in the way. The way of the Hyuga is precision. We do not do anything needlessly. Discipline is held. Strength is important, but only so long as it does not get in the way of precision. I suggest that from here on out, Naruto, you train with Hinata in the mornings. Every day at dawn, she performs yoga. If you wish to continue down this path, you must as well. Naruto nodded. Neji then smiled. Fair. I will handicap myself today. No palm rotation. That should put us on more even ground. Now show me that I did not waste my time teaching you. Naruto rushed forward toward Neji, striking out with open palms. Neji would push this aside as Naruto's chakra expelled from his hands with intense pressure. Neji attempted to come through from under to strike Naruto's solar plexus. Such a place would be devastating. It was taught to practitioners of this style that the stomach was the seat of chakra, and that the solar plexus was the root of the nerves. These two places, when struck, would devastate anyone, and almost guarantee a one-shot victory when using this technique. As Neji's hand came toward Naruto's stomach, he used his own hand to push it away. Bursts of blue chakra popped out about them. Both adversaries Byakugan were active, the veins in their temples bulging with strain to see everything at once in fine detail. Neji's lip turned up in a smile as Naruto was displaying incredible progress, but it was time to finish this. He swept Naruto's leg, putting him on the ground, and then raised a palm to strike his abdomen. But to Neji's surprise, Naruto rolled back. Having not lost his bearing from the fall, he seemed ready the moment he hit the ground, and took it in stride. In fact, if Neji didn't know better, he would assume that Naruto purposefully left himself open to bait Neji into a position he could predict. He came in with a palm strike to Neji's shoulder, attempting to take out his non-dominant arm. A small victory in a battle like this. Neji flipped back with one hand and stood there to check his shoulder. His hand was dangling numb and lifeless to the side. Neji took this brief respite to repair the damage done, placing his own hand on his shoulder and sending a pulse of chakra in to unclog his tenketsu. He did so and managed to regain motor functions within it. However, this was only partially successful, as his arm was still weak and was still very much numb. 
these two things together would limit his precision and make this arm practically useless offensively speaking, which he knew Naruto would now know. Neji's smile turned into a scowl as his pride took as much damage as his shoulder had. But all the same, Neji needed to maintain control. Loss of emotion also hindered precision. One must be in perfect control at all times to make use of this technique pool. He took a deep breath and held it there for a few seconds before releasing it and offering a smirk. Well done, Naruto. The first point belongs to you. But round two is about to begin and I believe in best two of three. Neji would be the one to initiate the attack. It was time to stop holding back. He would come at Naruto with both hands open. Even if his left hand was mostly useless, he knew where the Tenketsu were, and even a strike in their general location would be enough to at least cause pain and slight numbness via proximity damage. He knew Naruto wouldn't expect him to use his left hand, and that's why Neji would use it. He would lead in with a faint strike with his dominant hand that Naruto would parry before Neji struck him in the side near his liver. Naruto was struck and took a few steps to the side before falling over, gripping his side. Naruto writhed for a moment before managing to sit up. Hey, that was a dirty strike. Neji shook his head. This is more than a test of the skills I've taught you, Naruto. This is a true spar, as close to a real battle as you and I will come. Neji then crossed his arms. Second point belongs to me. Now up, let's continue our duel. Naruto managed to stand. This time, neither rushed in. They simply began to circle each other. Proper caution had been achieved by both sides at this moment, as they were only now finishing measuring themselves and properly gauging where they stood in this moment. Hinata sat with her father, as even Hanabi and the other Hyuga present began to watch. Who do you think will win, father? Hinata asked. Hiyashi stood there and waited in the balance. Neji is unquestionably stronger than Naruto. After all, Neji has taken the role of Naruto's master for these past few months. But Neji has handicapped himself and refused to use one of the most important techniques of the gentle fist. Given Naruto's ingenuity and quick nature, as well as Neji's drive and determination, it could go either way. Puffs of chakra expelled from the boy's hands as they continued to strike at each other. By this time, Neji's numb arm was starting to get its chakra back to boil and control was growing more steady with each passing moment. Naruto was still feeling the residual effects of being struck near the liver. This had become more than just a spar. It had become a chance to determine who would be top dog. Naruto always knew this moment would come. Neji was a prideful boy, and even though he taught Naruto everything he knew, one could not expect that Neji would just roll over and be okay with Naruto surpassing him. Neji had said it himself. He was training Naruto simply so he could become a good foil for Neji that would push him to new heights. Naruto refused to let this remain. He would prove that he could be better than the genius, even if he couldn't use palm rotation. As each attack came in, it was parried, causing this portion of the battle to outlast the previous two thirds by at least four minutes. Neji would create distance and would utilize vacuum palm to push Naruto back a ways and create distance. Neji began attempting something. Chakra began to mold around his hands. Hiyashi sat forward. Impossible. Hinata looked to her father. What is it? Neji took his time to properly mold the chakra, and by the time it finished, it looked as if his hands were surrounded by blue lion heads. Gentle step, twin lions! Neji raced forward. He jumped into the air ready to strike Naruto. Naruto would see this coming and his Tensaigon would activate. He would then attempt to make use of the protecting 8 trigram 64 palms, intent to block Neji's attack. With Neji pushed back to defend himself from these sharp blades, Naruto rushed at Neji with an open palm. At that moment, Neji released a palm rotation, knocking Naruto back. Naruto sat there for a moment before sitting up. Hey, you said you weren't going to use that technique. Neji stood there for a moment before responding. Well, you utilized your Tensaigon. Naruto stood. Nah, uh you're not pulling that. You put restrictions on yourself. You never told me I couldn't do things. Neji looked around at the Hyuga watching the battle. He pushed his hair back with a slightly false smile, meant to make things look a little better for him. So I did. Well, how about we just call this battle a draw then? Neji extended his hand to Naruto. Naruto looked down at it and then around at the others watching the scene. He also put on a mostly false grin. Sure, a draw it is. He shook Neji's hand as there was some clapping in the background before the crowd dispersed. After this, Hiyashi stood and walked over. Neji, I didn't know you knew the gentle step twin lions technique. That's an incredibly difficult technique to master. When did you learn it? Neji thought about it. About a month ago. Hiyashi was confused. A month? Neji nodded. You displayed the technique two months ago to Hinata and Hanabi. I witnessed it and began working on it myself. Hiyashi was even more surprised. So, you saw it demonstrated. Once, and then mastered it in a month? Neji nodded. Hiyashi laughed. I had to be shown 14 times, and only after two years did I master that technique. You truly are something else, Neji. 
The boy let off a slight smile of pride. He offered a slight bow and proceeded to go on his way to clean up. Hiyashi looked to Naruto and put a hand on his shoulder. You did good as well, Naruto. Your incomplete usage of Hinata's technique served you well but could be improved. Naruto nodded solemnly. Hiyashi put his other hand on Naruto's other shoulder. Hey now, don't look so glum. You managed to faithfully recreate a technique that you saw only once, with a body incapable of properly performing the task. That's a feat close to par with the gentle step. Hiyashi was lying through his teeth. Gentle step was ten times harder. Naruto offered up a smile and a slight bow and also left to clean up. That night after supper, he went to bed. Tomorrow would be the first day of school since renovations had ended. Naruto was excited to see what the interior looked like. The day after, however, he woke up to Hinata standing in front of him. Hinata? He questioned. She smiled at him. Would you like to join me for yoga today? Naruto looked at the clock and then out the window. Has the sun even risen yet? He asked. She shook her head. That's what makes it magical. Come on. Naruto begrudgingly got out of bed and changed into some training clothes. He met her outside where she had set out two mats. She stood by the eastern gate of the compound overlooking the horizon. This is my favorite place to train, she said. Naruto then followed her lead. She got down on the mat and began contorting her body in ways that Naruto considered ungodly. She knew he was fresh to this, so she helped him get started and to move slowly. It's important to remain relaxed, Naruto. Don't strain. If you do, you'll get a cramp, and those can ruin your day if you're not careful. She helped him find a good starting place. She was twisting her body and doing handstands, all while Naruto could barely do the bow. Hinata was already doing the peacock, which she then transitioned into the crow. Naruto tried to do a crow, but all he succeeded in doing was falling flat on his face. Hinata laughed so hard that she too fell over. She helped Naruto stand. Perhaps I should slow down as well to help you get your footing. Naruto shook his head. No, I don't want to hold you back. Hinata giggled. You won't. I'm just going to slow down as to not intimidate you. I'll help you learn. Let's focus on some standing poses for now. It'll be easier. She had Naruto get into a straight stance. Follow me, she said. She leaned forward, downward facing dog. Naruto followed. Thereafter she stood, warrior one. She then transitioned into warrior two. The two continued like this until the sun had fully risen over the horizon, painting the sky orange. Naruto would then do a few more training exercises with Hinata, learning techniques that he hadn't known before working on mastering the protective 8 trigram 64 palms. They continued training like this until Hiyashi awoke. Breakfast was made and Naruto and Hinata ate together. Naruto rubbed his shoulders as he felt the pain within them. Man, my body hasn't been this sore in a long time. Hinata scoffed a laugh as she took another bite of food. Did you think my exercises were easy? I'm growing stronger too, Naruto, but I'm doing it in a streamlined fashion to optimize speed and precision, and now you are too. Just you wait, you'll start seeing the results you're looking for soon. After breakfast, the two would change into their school clothes and gather their books and things. They then walked to school together. As soon as they entered homeroom, they heard the clamoring. They witnessed one of their classmates, Sasuke Uchiha, standing among a crowd of people. Naruto couldn't help but be interested. He walked over to the crowd, Hinata not far behind. What's going on? Sasuke turned around to display lavender eyes, from which rings spanned out from the center. Sasuke let out a smile. Apparently, I'm the next Six Paths. The two boys stood there, their divinely blessed eyes locked. It was as if fate itself had ordained this moment. The moment where these two knew that their futures would be inevitably locked forever. The day where Yin and Yang met once again. And that's the end of this video, I think. Most definitely, we'll make a new part to this at some point in the future. I was originally just going to give Naruto the Tense Saigon, but honestly, I needed some world building. So I thought to give Sasuke the Rinnegan. I always lean into Hamada possessing the Tense Saigon, but there's never been any proof that he did. All we know is that Hamada possessed Six Paths Chakra, and that he lived on the moon where apparently people knew what the Tense Saigon was. It's also strange because the Tensaigon was once a vessel for other Byakugan. I'll be honest, Kishimoto left the Moon Clan very vague, and it would have been beautiful if he had fleshed them out a bit more in the Boruto series. But alas, not everything works out the way we'd hoped. That's why you've got me. To fill in the blanks with headcanon and make it official, at least in Amagi canon. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, leave a comment below to tell us and click that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, click the subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications so YouTube can let you know when a new video like this one drops. Until next time, peace out.